Hello, I'm Graham Steele, CEO and founder of CryptoSense, and today I'm going to talk about hard-coded keys and where to find them. So what is a hard-coded key? So if we're dealing with cryptography, we need to have a cryptographic key for most of our operations. So if I'm gonna encrypt some data, I need to have a key that I'm gonna to use to help me do that encryption, and that's the secret, that's the, the value that you're gonna to need to have in order for you to be able to de decrypt that piece of data uh, yourself uh, later on. So it's really important that cryptographic keys are properly generated and managed and kept secret uh, in order for this cryptography, this encryption to, to really work. And there's a well-known problem that crops up a lot in the real world, which is cryptographic keys getting hard-coded or baked into the code of some software or hardware. So typically this happens because uh, we thought, well, we're doing some testing, we're still in the development stage, so let's just use the, the same fixed string as our cryptographic key here, and then all the tests will go on. Uh, and then somehow we forget that in production, we need to make it possible to generate new keys and store them in a secure place and fetch them from that secure place when we need them. Uh, and so that doesn't happen. So in practice, it's a real problem. So how big of a problem is it? Well, in 2018 here at CryptoSense, we went through all of the CVEs, so the Common Vulnerability Enumeration Announcements uh, for vulnerabilities in that year, uh, looking for ones which had something to do with cryptography. So there's about a thousand that were tagged with uh, cryptographic uh, issues uh, of some kind. Out of those, about uh, 120 were uh, hard-coded keys. So it's about one-eighth of all of the issues around uh, cryptography that crop up in the CVE schedule. Uh, so it doesn't matter how fine and brilliant your mathematics of your cryptography is, if you're, you've got a hard-coded key, you're gonna have uh, problems. You're gonna have a problem if it's a widely used product and everybody has the same key in it because that means that if I can do some kind of analysis on my version of the product and find out the key, then I can use that to decrypt the data from everybody else's use of the product. But it's even a problem if I uh, make my own software and I'm the only person that has that hard-coded key because typically if the key's in the code, uh, there's gonna be easier ways for an attacker to find it, either by looking at the binary or maybe they can get access to the source code somehow or that leaks out uh, as it has in, in, in real cases. You might've heard about the SolarWinds123 credential that was uh, found in a GitHub repository, part of the, the big scandal around the, the recent uh, SolarWinds attack. Uh, and other instances of that kind. So we know that putting keys in the code is a really bad idea and we want to avoid it. So there's a bunch of ways that you can try to find, to, if, if you've got a whole bunch of, of applications, say you're working in a company where there are thousands of developers and you wanna be able to check that there are no hard-coded keys in the software that you're gonna go ahead and deploy. So there's various ways you can do that. So the simplest way is sort of built around some kind of static approach. So anything from a, not so sophisticated, looking for the you know the word key somewhere in the in the software, through to quite sophisticated static analysis approaches that uh, really kind of construct the control graph and everything, and then looking there for something that might uh, indicate the use of a, of a string as a key. Um, uh, this can definitely help, um, but you do often have the problem of uh, false positives. So there are some quite powerful tools out there that look for things like variables with the name key. And then of course there are lots of reasons why you might want to name a variable key that got nothing to do with cryptography. Uh, and so you end up having to, to search through a lot of uh, false positives. Uh, there are other ways out there that people try and get around that problem. So there are approaches where you, uh, for example, you have a kind of AI type algorithm for figuring out what's a false positive of a key and what isn't. And you tag, you go through a whole lot of public GitHub repositories look for something that your algorithm tags as a key, and then tag that as an issue and see if you can get the person who's running the project to tell you whether it's a false positive or not, so that sort of for free you get training uh, for, your, for your algorithm. Uh, there's other sort of fun ways to do it, but you're gonna always have limitations on these static approaches because it's very hard to work out what is test code, for example, uh, this might be being used as a key just to check that the algorithm is available or the provider is available. Uh, so that can be quite difficult. So the way that we do it at uh, CryptoSense is that we have a tool which also looks at an application while it's running. So we can see what values actually get used for keys. And of course we have a static scanning tool as well that is very good at finding strings that might be keys inside the, the code. And we can actually match those together so we can say, well, here's a string that looks like a key and tell you what, you actually use that to encrypt some data when, when your application is running. So that we find that that's a pretty uh, effective approach at getting rid of uh, false positives. But there's all sorts of other challenges around finding these hard-coded credentials. For one thing, they might not actually be in the code. They might be in a config file, six levels deep in your um, these kind of old file systems and hidden inside some XML and whatever it is. Uh, and so they might not be in the source code that you're looking at at all. 
so there's various ways that you can get around that. We're actually going to do a webinar here at CryptoSense. Uh, so we're running it on April the 1st, no joke. Uh, and we're going to talk about some real case studies around hard-coded credentials and, and how you can make an effective uh, system together to, to actually find those and eliminate them. So please go ahead and sign up for that. Uh, that'll be in the comments. Uh, otherwise, don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with cryptography news here at CryptoSense. And I'll see you again soon here for another video on the channel. Thank mm -hmm. you.